Today we are going to discuss a very simple interview question which you can already see on the screen that you have to write a function to find the power of a to the power n. So usually in most of the programming languages you will find something similar to this function like POW which is a short form of power a to the power n which essentially calculates this thing and now you might be very happy seeing that you are given such a simple problem and just do like this right return power of a to the power n because this pow is already included in the standard library but actually here you are asked to write a function yourself that calculates this so you have to write def pow which takes two parameters a and and then it will return something and in order to calculate the power so you have to start from the basics right so what is a to the power n it means a into a into a so multiply total n times so we can just use a simple loop maybe a for loop to calculate it and then return the value so let's do it so result could be one and then for underscore in range n result is result into a and here we shall just return the result so that's it that's the solution for the asked problem and now you will have to uh, calculate the time complexity and the time complexity is root the power n and uh, order of n and space complexity is order of one right and space complexity so sometimes the interviewer won't ask you particularly about space complexity but if you calculate time complexity you can also mention the space complexity just to show that you know how that time complexity is not the only thing to worry about we also have to make a trade-off between time and space so in this problem the time complexity is the more interesting part at this point the interviewer might ask you to improve your time complexity or test your code so let's uh, improve our time complexity first and we can test the code later but if you are asked in the reverse order which is uh, test your code you can use the similar method i shall show you later on so let's improve the time complexity so you might wonder then how can we improve the time complexity this is already o n which looks good so the interviewer might give you a hint or the interviewer may not give you a hint then we actually want to do it in log n time and without increasing the space complexity so the space complexity should remain order of one and now if it's log n you might think of a divide and conquer approach and if you remember the basic things like say a to the power four right this is basically a square into a square so if n is a even number is an even number so a to the power n would be a to the power n by 2 into a to the power n by 2 and if you calculate the first part which is a to the power n by 2 then you don't need to calculate it again you can just reuse the value right so we can have say let's assume that m is a to the power n by 2 then you just return m into m and what if n is an odd number so if it's an odd number then we can make it an even number like this say if m is n minus 1 then if n is odd number then m is definitely an even number so it's very simple in case of n is odd number then a to the power n becomes a into a to the power n minus 1 and here this n minus 1 must be an even number and then we can just 
calculate it like this the way the way we did it here so now if we do it like this the time complexity will become definitely log n because every time we are dividing it by 2 so say instead of calculating let me show you how fast it is so a to the power 64 right so we can just calculate a to the power 32 and then into a to the power 32 so we don't need to calculate this twice right so you can just calculate it once and when we want a to the power 32 then actually this is a to the power 16 into a to the power 16 and here again we don't need to calculate a to the power 16 twice so you can just calculate a to the power 16 once so this is how it becomes a divide and conquer problem that you keep dividing it and when it's a square which is a into a then you can stop here that okay now i know this is a and you start returning so if you are thinking of a recursive way so this could be your base or maybe you can go one step more like a to the power one which is one so sorry which is a and even a to the power zero which is one so let's start uh, changing our implementation of pow so if the, impl uh, the recursive implementation will be pretty simple don't worry so if n mod 2 is 1 which means that this is a odd number then we return a into power of a to the power n minus 1 else we return so else we first calculate we have to first calculate m n by 2 and then we return m into m so you have to note one thing that if we just return right like this like return power of a to the power n by 2 into power of a to the power n by 2 so this is not actually helping because here we are calling this and again we are calling this that's why we are calculating this only once and storing it in m and then we are just returning m into m which is great so this essentially makes it uh, faster which is of course uh, order of log n but now when this recursion will stop so we can write it like this if n is 0 return 1 if n is 1 return a so these two are your base condition in, in the recursive function and this is where the magic is happening so if it's an odd number you can just make it like a into a to the power n minus 1 and if it's even just calculate the a to the power n by 2 and return m into m and that covers some interesting cases like what if n is 0 then if n is 0 then whatever the value of a is you, you will return 1 if n is 1 then you can return a and now we have to think a bit more like what what if n is a negative number right like to the power power of to the power minus 4 right and then it will be basically 1 by 2 to the power 4 which is 1 by 16 and we have to handle that case as well like if n is less than 0 then return 1 by power of to the power minus n so this will cover all the cases and of course you can go through some by creating the test cases like okay now let's test the function like power of to the power 3 power of to the power minus 3 power of 5 to the power 0 power of 100 to the power 1 
So something like this, and you can work your interviewer throughout uh, through the code with these inputs, with these values for A and N. And that's it. We are done with our efficient implementation of power function. And some of you might be wondering why I'm showing such simple things. So actually, I was asked this question in one of the interviews I appeared in. I won't name the company for sure, but so this question is actually asked in the interviews. And in that particular interview, I straightforward went into the login solution because I didn't want to waste time with the linear uh, solution or the using the for loop, the first solution I've shown you. So what you can do is during the interview, if you already know this, you can just ask the interviewer that, do you want me to uh, explain my thought process? And then you can just explain that you can do like this, divide and conquer. And if the interviewer agrees, then you can just implement it. Because often as this problem is simple, the interviewer might have another question prepared for you. So if you can go through it faster, that will help uh, to save, to get more time for the next questions. So good luck with your interview preparation. Hopefully I shall come up with more videos to help you prepare for the interviews.